What's up everybody, Anthony Saratelli here of Jersey Filmmaker, and first of all, excuse my voice, came down with a little bit of a cough that I just can't seem to kick, so I'm dealing with that. But anywho, I've decided to do a mini-series on editing a feature-length film because I'm currently involved in the post-production process of the independent feature-length film, Double Belgian, as the editor. A little while back, I did an episode called Jobs on Set, I'll put a link to that above, where I went on set of this independent film on its first day of shooting. Double Belgian is a buddy comedy about two guys that are trying to start their own brewery. It's written and directed by my good friend, Graham Winfrey. This is his first feature length film, so congrats to Graham on that. As far as this mini series goes, I don't know how many parts it's gonna be yet. I'm gonna kinda break it down as I go. I'm thinking it's gonna end up being maybe five parts. But today, in part one, I wanna go over media management, both on your hard drive and within your NLE, which in this case will be Adobe Premiere Pro. I wanna put this out there up front that I've edited a lot in my career, but I've never edited a feature length film. I definitely don't wanna be a full-time editor in my career. I enjoy being out in the field, being behind the camera, working with actors, as opposed to sitting at my desk for hours upon hours. I do eventually get bored with that. But at the same time, I really do love the creativity that's involved in editing. It's amazing how you can shape and mold the story in this part of the process. You can give your footage to two different editors and get back two completely different stories, especially in documentary style work. But even in narrative, you might at least get back a different feel for the story, depending on who edits it. So editors have a huge role in the production process and can bring extreme value to your project. So go editors. And lastly, before I get into this, just note that there really is no one way to do a lot of the things I'm about to show you. I'm just gonna talk about how my process has evolved so you can hopefully pick out a thing or two to add to your process to make yourself more efficient. So if you come across this and you know a better way to do something than the way I'm doing it, please let me know, put it in the comments below so everyone else can find out. I definitely wanna know if there's an easier way to do it so I could speed up my workflow as well because efficiency equals money. So definitely don't hesitate to give me that feedback. I'd really appreciate it. And I'm sure the people reading below and watching this will as well. Now that I got all the formalities out of the way, let's finally move into media management. All right, here we are on the computer and you'll see I have the DB movie, double Belgian movie on the desktop. If we open this up, you'll see I have a double Belgian folder. I like to do this to represent the project itself, just in case I end up adding any others. If there happens to be any extra room on the hard drive in the end, I can always add other projects by folders right here. Moving into this folder, we have what I have in every project. I have this saved as a template. Let me show you that. If I open up my RAID hard drive here and I went into Jersey Filmmaker, you'd see my folder template. I have this saved on all of my drives that I use frequently. None of these folders have anything in them. It's just a template so I can copy and paste, select all, copy, and then I paste into other project folders. Going through these, I think they're pretty straightforward project files. Adobe Premiere, After Effects, Audition, if you're in DaVinci Resolve, any type of project file that you might need, I store here. Moving on to the footage, pretty simple. In this case, since it's a narrative, you have all the scenes labeled and individualized. And within each scene folder is the footage folder itself. These are red files, so they're broken down pretty intensely. But we also have the audio files in here as well, so we can easily access them according to scene. You'll notice that I have an audio folder over here which if the project was smaller, I would use for the actual audio files, but in this case, it's best put in the footage folder. Now let me note that I didn't set this project up originally. There was a different editor for the trailer. I took over after that, so this isn't labeled exactly how I would personally label it, but the overall folder and file structure is very similar to the way I would do it since I set this part of it up anyways, so this will do. Moving on past audio is music. Not much in here right now, scratch music. There's a wedding scene, so we have some music for the wedding. But there will be a lot more added to this as we keep going and we get more temp music put in there and then eventually the score and other actual music we'll be using in the film. In the sound effects folder, you can see we have a couple sound effects such as car zoom by whoosh, cell phone ringing, gulping sounds. So some of these are wild sounds that we got on set, but very few of them. Others are just ones I've grabbed. Again, I'm only 15 scenes into editing this thing out of 55, so we don't have many things in here yet. I really haven't dove into putting in a lot of the sound effects that we'll need in the end. Moving on to graphics, again, self-explanatory. Anything you might need as far as graphics, such as title cards or anything for visual effects. Miscellaneous is empty right now, but just like it says, it's miscellaneous, so anything that doesn't fit any of these other categories may end up in here. Pluralize, I use Pluralize from time to time. Sometimes I end up using this as a different folder, but when I use Pluralize and it syncs the footage and audio files, 
they will end up in here. Frame.io I often use to collaborate with my clients and I'm using it in this situation to collaborate with the director. However, I'm not saving the rendered files that get put on Frame.io, but if I did, they would be stored here. And last is renders. There's some things in here that have been rendered out, such as the trailer, some still grabs. I haven't had to render any copies yet to put anywhere because Frame.io is taking care of that. But when I do, this is where any exports, renders, whatever you want to call them, will end up. So that's how I organize all of my projects, no matter if it's a feature film, something for my YouTube channel, or a web project for a corporate company. It's all organized the same because this is how I know it, this is how I see it, and this makes it easy for me. So let's move into Adobe Premiere. You'll see I have the folders organized exactly the same except for double zero, which on my hard drive is project files, but since I don't plan on importing many project files in here, I change this to sequences. If I do end up importing any project files, it becomes its own folder anyways, so I don't feel the need to have that. Now granted, some of these are empty, like miscellaneous, polarize, frame.io, I actually didn't even import any of the renders but they're here in case I need them or you can delete them if you don't want them. So I'm just gonna go down the list here and starting with sequences. This isn't something I do all the time, but it is something I have right now in this project because although I'd like to, I don't get to just edit this project on my desktop. It sometimes comes on the road with me and my laptop is a little bit slower than my desktop is. So I've set up a sync template for when I'm syncing all of my audio tracks, which I'll talk about in the next part of this series. It just allows me to have as many audio tracks as I need and it also puts this divider exactly where I want it as opposed to opening up and it's right in the middle and then I can't see all my audio tracks. So it's nice to have a sync template. So I can open this up and relabel this to whatever scene it is. Because if I try to copy and paste on my laptop, sometimes it takes forever. So I just have these here for my convenience. Next is the double Belgian folder. I have three folders within, which is feature length, scenes, and strings. Feature length at this time has nothing in it, but that's where I'll start putting my sequences once I start building the full length sequence of the feature film. Scenes has all the scenes individually. Like I said, I'm through 15 right now and working on 16. And then lastly is what I call strings, which is a bunch of scenes strung together. As you can see, I have one through two when I was at that point, one through nine when I got down here. Then I'm going from 10 on, so I don't have to render out enormous scenes as we continue on here so the director can see just where we're at in the process and he doesn't have to watch all the stuff we've kind of already locked in. So closing up Double Belgian, there's a miscellaneous folder which I didn't create, so it's a bunch of miscellaneous scenes that they were probably using for the trailer. And then last up is the trailer folder which has a bunch of the trailer sequences cut on different dates. So moving on, closing out sequences, let's move into footage. And as you can see, it looks pretty much just like the folder on the hard drive. I'm gonna show you scene five because it's somewhat complex and it'd be a good example. You have the audio and footage folders in the audio, pretty simple and well labeled. This would mean scene five A, take one, take two, take three, five B, take four, and so on. Well labeled and really nicely done. Great job by the audio guys. Moving into footage, you'll see that these are laid out really cleanly as well. The only thing is that with red footage, you cannot relabel red footage on your hard drive. Now technically I could go on here and relabel this whatever I want, 5A, take one, and that would work just fine. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go through these scenes one by one and check out the slate since they did a really great job with this on this production. I wanna make one more note about importing red files. So let's go down to a scene I haven't done yet. Let's go to scene 42 and look at the footage. And as you'll see, the red files are mostly in individualized folders and not so much as standalone files. This happens if you import the files by going to File Import. Let me show you exactly what I mean. If I delete this footage here and we go ahead and File Import Scene 42 footage, you'll see that it imports it exactly the same as before with a lot of individualized folders and very few individual files. Now let's try this again the correct way. Let's delete these footage folders and files and we'll go to Media Browser. It's already on the Double Belgian folder. Let's go to Footage, Scene 42, Footage, this is where you want to import red files from, so I click on all of them, I drag them over here into footage, they import individually as they should. And one more time, if I go back to the other way, once again you'll see that it comes in in different folders, but the problem really is that it imports multiple files into each folder. And these are just duplicates, so you're going to have way too many files hanging around for no reason, it's just a big pain in the butt, so import them the right way. The project is set up like this, unfortunately, so I'm having to redo a little bit of this myself. So the editor that did the trailer for this film either didn't know this or was honestly too lazy, which I can understand because there's a lot of files in this project, but 
this isn't the correct way to do it, definitely drag them in from the media browser. And that's all for the footage folder, and I mean with audio, music, sound effects, it's all exactly what we saw on the hard drive, so I don't think there's much to explain here. I think it's really easy to follow, so this is the way I've decided to structure my stuff over time, and it changes a little bit here and there, but I've pretty much stuck with this for a couple years now, and I really like it. In part two, if I didn't already mention it, we'll do some audio syncing, and we'll get into some of my sequences, and I'll show you exactly how I've set them up and how I intend to use them moving forward. So that's my media management structure, both on the hard drive and in the NLE. Again, if you have different ways of doing it, I'd love to hear about it because maybe it's something I can implement into my process to make myself more efficient. So go right ahead and leave any of those comments below or of course reach out to me on any of my social medias, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, at Jersey Filmmaker. If you like this video, help me out and click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, click that little bell and you'll get alerts to all future episodes. And as you can see, I'm only six subscribers away from a thousand, so hook it up, tell your friends, hit that subscribe button, let's keep this channel growing. Also, keep a lookout for part two, three, maybe four and five over the next couple months as I go through this process of editing this film. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and remember to get out there, don't wait, go create, and I'll see you next time.